We made it to Thursday, folks. Welcome to Houston Life, March 18th, 2021. I'm Derek Shore, alongside a familiar face, Casey Curry, filling in for Courtney today. Hi, Casey. Hi, Derek. So excited to be here with you guys today. I love Houston Life as a viewer. So fun to sit kind of on the other side of the desk today. Well, you, you have been a television veteran. You know what you're doing, so I know you're very comfortable on this side of the desk. You are so well-liked here Aww, at KPRC2 you. and well-liked in Houston. So Aww. looking forward to catching up. Well, and you know the feeling's mutual. Oh, we don't see you often uh, enough, Casey. Right. Well, everybody's busy, and it's nice to see people actually in person. I know. I feel almost naked without my mask. Without you, yeah, I know. We take off our masks just yep. when we're here in Studio B. That's right. We do want to point out to our viewers very quickly that we're expecting to hear from Mayor Turner. I believe he will be making the announcement for the brand new police chief who will be replacing fast. Chief Art Acevedo, who announced earlier that he's going to Miami. Wow. So stay tuned for that. When that happens, we will go to that live. But let's catch up with yeah, Casey let's do Curry it. for Not a like while. we don't chat, but let's chat for the public. That sounds good. <laughs> that sounds good. So early on, when Houston Life first started back in yeah. 2016. Wow. Was that the first time we had you on the show? 2016 or 2017, maybe? I, you know, I don't even know how long ago it was, to be honest. I feel like I've just known you guys forever, so. And we feel the same, but I feel like when you connect with someone, that's a good sign when you it feel like you've good. always known them. It really is good. So your family, you're you're married, and you have yeah. a daughter who's now seven years old. Well, I know a lot of folks watched me uh, pregnant, you know, with Winnie many years ago doing the weather, and now Winnie is seven. Wow. Uh, so it just, of course, you guys know, all of you with kids know, they're just the light of your life. Um, and how's she doing with uh, the homeschooling situation? She's done really great. She's done virtual the entire time. But I just have looked at it as such a gift. I mean... When is she ever going to be seven again? When am I going to get this time with her mm -hmm. to pop upstairs at lunch and see her and have lunch with her? It's just, it's just such a gift to be able to be with her. A pretty magical time. Yeah. Man. So we do YouTube videos sometimes. She'll want to do like science experiments. Oh, cool. Yes. So that was us recording and getting blown up, always with our safety glasses, of course. <laughs> uh, Winnie also <laughs> loves beauty. As okay. you can imagine, I don't know where she would have gotten that from, taking care of her skin. <laughs> uh, so she'll make face masks and all that kind of good stuff. There we were at uh, Cacao and Cardamom. I'm sure you've been there before. Yes. We made chocolate shoes. Those are chocolate shoes. Chocolate How shoes. Beautiful. And I'm pretty sure we ate the entire shoe. <laughs> each. <laughs> this photo of you two makes me Aww. smile so much. You can just tell you have such a strong bond. I do love her very, very much. Do yeah. people ask you all the time, okay, how do you do the mom thing? Because again, you, you were pregnant with Winnie when you yeah. were on the air. And since uh, leaving meteorology, you know her as a media personality and meteorologist, Casey, people probably ask you, like, what have you been up to? How are you doing it all? Because I swear, being a busy professional, a yeah. spouse, a parent, it's a lot of hats to wear. It is a lot of hats to wear, and that's actually something that I talk about with my new coworkers at Alliant Group. I've, I've landed at a professional services forum, and I uh, really am responsible for all of our community outreach there. And so when I talk to our other female leaders, this is a discussion that we have. You know, a lot of them are thinking about having children. They've just gotten married, and that's a real topic for women, and especially during the pandemic. I feel like a lot of the burden, you know, has fallen on women in a lot of ways to figure out how to care for their kids, do work amazing, um, and, and then and of course, you want to get back to the community. How do you fit all of that in? Yeah. Um, and so it is definitely a challenge. Support is the biggest part. I always say my girlfriends and my husband, my family, that's what makes it happen. Yeah, your community of people. That's right. It's so great seeing all of these photos of you <laughs> doing what you love to do out in the community. Yeah. And one thing I love about you, Casey, is not only are you super busy, and I don't know if you sleep more than two or three hours per night. No, never. No but mom you, does. you have found a way <laughs> to use uh, your public persona to not only give back to the community, but also to inspire other people out there. I know you're a huge proponent of STEM education. Yeah, so science, technology, engineering, and math, that is really our focus at Alliant Group. And what a gift that now I get to help make that change for the next generation of maybe the next female meteorologist or the next black scientist. You know, I mean, that's really what it's all about is inspiring that next generation. So this is with the Women's Chamber, the Greater Houston Women's Chamber of Commerce. There I am with my, my colleague, Darina. We were making steam at home kits for oh, cool. Stevens Elementary. Because you can imagine every kid is at home learning in the beginning. And this is actually Deirdre Ricketts. You might remember Deirdre. She was our Elementary Science Teacher Award winner at HISD. We were on your show a couple of years ago. You yes. were on media of course. And so that was her school. She called one day and was like, Casey, I don't know what I'm going to do. Our kids, they're underserved in the population. 
they can't just go out and buy everything they need, magnets and whatever else they might need for um, experiments at home. I'm worried that they're not going to be doing science anymore. So we created those kits for her. That's for so all her cool. kids. I mean, what what a, an amazing thing to be able to do for someone else. Well, science is great, right? It is great. And I remember as a kid, I loved the science experiment, um, the, the experiments that we would do at home. And it's been interesting how the word even science has been somehow politicized. Oh. People who, you know, don't believe in science and believe yeah. the rumors instead. When I was in school, well, if you didn't believe in science, it was just called failing, right? right? But I think we can all acknowledge that science is cool. And because these young people, the jobs of tomorrow, 50% of them, they don't even exist yet. But if a young person have a really has a really strong foundation in STEM education, right. then they're just setting themselves up for success. That's right. It gives you options. It teaches you that critical thinking. So you may go on to be an English teacher, but you've learned the critical thinking skills that you need by studying science, learning about technology, immersing yourself in math, even if that's not your thing in the end learning those skills really is invaluable it really does give you choices in life learning how things work yeah. I wonder if part of your flexibility just as a human and the fact that you are so dynamic is a direct result of the fact that your upbringing was very interesting little known fact about Casey Curry she was born in Panama yep. your father was in the army so you guys were moving all the, time. all the time is it true you went to nine elementary schools that is absolutely true nine elementary schools and three fifth grades three fifth grades and at Talk the time, about being the new kid. That must have been times. tough, or did you love it? It was tough then, but you're right. I think those skills that I learned growing up are what has enabled me to be successful in a lot of ways now. I mean, I've never met a stranger. I, I'm never scared to walk into a room of people that I don't know. And how great is that? You know, you have all this, this room of people that you don't know, and now you get to know them. I mean, that, how great is that? And plus just living all over the world and learning about different cultures, it just gives you a different appreciation, which is why I think we've settled in Houston and loved it so much, you know, because it, it does feel very international. And we have so many different kinds of people here that have come from all over the world, different industries, and it just feels really comfortable, like home. Yeah, well, it is your home. You're a uh, part of the fabric of the city now of course thinking about the way I was raised I mean I was raised in a much more insular place so I was terrified even when we would go visit my grandmother in a small town going to church oh, with yeah. other young people I didn't know I was terrified of change yeah. so it's nice to hear a little bit about yeah, and like in the yours. military you actually go to church at some posts and bases depending on how big or small they are sometimes when you go to church on Sunday you're just going with whatever service they've got so you might be like, okay, well, we're all going to church today, but it might be Baptist today, or it might be Catholic today. What? Yes. Well, that's cool. So it's so super. So you just go with all of your friends and different families and, and whatever it is that day. And it's not that way at every post, and it may be different now than when I was a kid That is years so ago. But Listen, yeah. I would have loved that, yeah. because what a great way to be exposed to different beliefs. Yes, and you learn different hymns then, and just different ways that, the, that, the, that it works. You know, everybody's got different customs and ways that they do things in church. Something that you are really passionate about, uh, passionate about the environment yeah. and also animals. Animals, oh, they're my heart. Uh, we just continue to add to the animals. We don't have any more kids, but we've got more animals than we know what to do with. Wait, how many? Well, there's Rosita, our rescue dog from Red Collar Rescue, and the cat that Rosita is licking, not because she wants to eat him, because she loves him, uh, is Gray. And Gray on the left, Lunar Rainbow on the right, they're both uh, rescues. They were both just outside cats that we just were like, come on in. Um, one of our vet friends found Lunar Rainbow there. And we have another one, Cougar, that was, when the very beginning, when we moved into our neighborhood, there were a lot of feral cats. And oh, yeah. we just were like, we can't do that. That's just not gonna work. So It's a thing in Houston. It is, so we, did, we trapped, we have traps, so we trapped, uh, spay neuter released all of them and um, kept the kittens and then we'll get the kittens adopted so our colony is very small it's like four cats but we've gone through like five or six litters and one of our cats is from the litter you are such a good person <laughs> You really are. Or a crazy person. <laughs> no, that, that really is incredible because I know that takes a lot of time. And trapping a feral cat is not easy. It's patience. It could be dangerous, too. Yeah, but, you know, almost all of them, we only had one that just wasn't really happy about it, but she was the mom. We had to get her because that was the key to the whole thing. So yeah. she was the most, you know, wily of all of them. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, get the feral cats, yep. get them, you know, taken care yeah, of. Yeah, because once then, they're spayed and neutered, yeah, they don't good really to go. fight and they don't, you know, go to the bathroom everywhere so much. And Yeah, I was just out last night in the neighborhood and there were cats all over yeah. and I thought, wow, Houston, we got, we got a cat problem. Yeah, we need to get some traps to people.
We need more Casey Currys in the world. <laughs> um, okay, so meteorology. Um, I know you went to school in Colorado yeah. for undergrad. Journalism, uh, Davis journalism yeah. right? Colorado State? University of Colorado. University Davis. of Colorado. And then Mississippi, you did? Mississippi State. Okay. Which is where a lot of folks, once they've started working in the business, uh, Mississippi State is very smart about how they do things. They don't make you go back and get everything. They just take and let you choose what you need to take to pass and get your test. Oh, that's so nice. being a meteorologist, um, they want it to be very multidisciplinary. So they want pilots and teachers and all kinds of folks to be uh, meteorologists. So they make it very accessible for, for people. Do you feel like even though you have stopped being a meteorologist on television that weather is still in your blood? Yes. In fact, my husband uh, was just just talking about buying me a weather station, like one of those fancy ones for our house. So, no, and it is. And whenever anything happens, I'm always the one on the phone, like, okay, people, seriously, wrap your pipes, or seriously, um, whatever it is, get out of town, or the hurricane's coming, whatever it is. Yeah, I'm totally that person. I'm I'm militant about it. For okay, sure. well, I'm going to be calling you the next time because yeah, were like, you. Please, like, with your crew here, are you kidding me? You don't need to call me. <laughs> it's true. We do you have got an army Frank of meteorologists. And and Air I mean, come on now. Britta, like, come on, you're not calling me. Where were me. you yesterday, though? <laughs> Last night turned out to be such a beautiful evening, and the afternoon was great. Earlier in the day, though, I actually was in the parking lot of KPRC, and I called my producer, Aaron, and said, you know, I, I think I'm going to just take this meeting from my car. Yeah, because it wasn't the, safe. Yeah, but I did end up making a dash for it, and it's a good thing I did, because otherwise I would have been caught in that right. wind and rain well, for a long time. Well, and there were tornadoes with it, too. I mean, those were severe thunderstorms yesterday, so no, you probably didn't want to hang out in your car too much. Can you help me understand something? I can try. So, um, I think, how much time do we have before break, guys? <laughs> Okay, well, we have 30 seconds, but okay. I have a question for you about the whole hurricane naming thing, because yeah. I understand the Greek alphabet was yeah. just retired. People were getting confused. Yep. When we have a long hurricane season and we run out of A to Z names, yeah. then we go to the Greek alphabet, but that's not going to happen anymore, no, right? No, and they had done that um, over the years, because usually you just got to like A or B or C, and in the last few seasons, we've pretty much gone through the list, and that just got really challenging for people. Because it was like Eta, Theta, Zeta. Officials on, were on, saying on. that people were confused by yeah. the names and instead of focused on the storms. Okay.